Hold on. I like the splash screen. Oh, nice. TV. That's cool. Oh. Good evening, and uh, welcome to um, Not the Grumpy Vapors. Hi. <laughs> You've got me, Roy's Reviews, and Paper Bunny. Hello. Hello, folks. How the heck are we all this evening? Hello again, Craig. Long time no see, bud. Uh, long time no speak, Craig. <laughs> Hi, village. Hi, you red fox. Hey, Hobag. Hi, Hobag. Hi, Jay Hi, Jay Jari. Hi, Sinner. Hey, Hi, Sinner. Hi, Strays Village. Hi, yeah, everybody. It's been a long time since I've seen um, Sinner. Yeah, all of what, five minutes? Probably. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Good evening, everyone, and how are we this rather funny weather type Wednesday evening? It is such a weird evening. I know. It's been, hey, Smurf, it's been lovely all day until about three o'clock. Then we had these massive, gigantic hailstones about that size. Yeah, they were battering the head off me whenever I come out of work this afternoon. Bloody hurt, too. Makes it change me back on the head of you. True. <laughs> so we'll just give a we'll just give a people a few a few moments. Yeah, a few minutes to get in and Goober. Ah, yeah. Hiya Goober. Hey Goober. Hiya Colin. I'm Colin. So I just love the way people when they're saying hi the ones they put all the emotions in, like red and then the wee picture of a fox. Thumbs up. God, there goes that oh, yeah. What? There goes that cup of coffee. Oh, yep. Yep. I'm, I'm just bouncing on caffeine today. So, vapor bunny. Yes, my darling. What are you vaping on? What am I vaping on? Mm. I have got my trusty Sirius with the Voluna on top, and I picked up some rather tasty juice today. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. This is called SS Californian by Titanic Vapor, our very lovely friends from Belfast, of course. And this is bubblegum, and it is absolutely gorgeous. That's totally fine. gorgeous. I've never tried it, so I'll have to try it. Yes, you, babe, you will love this. Absolutely love this. But yes, it's done by the boys at Titanic Vapor. Eh, Titanic Vapor. But no, I picked this up. It. I picked this up from Balamina Vape Club, which, by the way, I officially start working next Tuesday. Next, oh, you get, you get into Tuesday off? Well, we're closed over Easter, uh, so I don't do, I don't do my first official shift until Tuesday. You're not open on Monday? Uh, I'm not sure, I don't think so. I'll have to, I'll have to check, um, but uh, I know my first shift in the ball my first official shift in the Ballymena shop is on Tuesday. Um, as for the Bally Money store, I don't know about that yet. I'll have to I'll have to get a hold of either Gary or Robert and find out. Um, Craig, I I did I've I've already done a shift uh, last week covering for Stephen. Um, but I'm still working in the kitchen. I have one more shift left in the kitchen, which is tomorrow. So then I've got a couple of days off before I start my new job. So yeah. I'm excited for starting the new job, but a little bit sad that I'm going to be leaving the kitchen because it's a, they're a great bunch of people to work for and I'm going to miss them terribly. But yeah, it's onwards and upwards. Time to move on, new start and all that. So. Hiya, Hussein. Hi, Hussein. Hey, Michelle. Hi Michelle. I just can't who was it? I just remember two days. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. Just the one to go then? 
Or did you hate it? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, uh, well, I've got my G box as well. I've been using that most of the day, and and that I have the last remnants of my Ribena Bliss mixed with raspberry tropical fruit. So, but yeah, this bubble gum stuff. Wow. Wow. Do you remember the strawberry bubble gum one that I had last week? Yeah. It's like that, only more bubble gummy. <gasps> Mm-hmm. Got me the better. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is unbelievably good. Hey, UK Andy. Hi, UK Andy. Hi, Maggie. Can't remember whether I said hi to her already or not, but I'll say it again. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Maggie. <laughs> I think I've said hello probably six million times between the last hour and this hour. Any wonder the amount of times you were on air, all fair, on air again. Yeah. So anyway, my dear, what are you vaping on this evening? Oof. Well... Matchy matchy, I've got the the G box with the bonds. I've got one of those with the bonds on top. Uh, I've got the radar in mine. I've got the bonds on top, and in that I have a bonzer. <laughs> in that I have got ice lolly, blue raspberry. Oh, that is gorgeous stuff. It's oh, it's all right. I like I like that one. It is really really nice. No, I think it's just all right. It's like a watered down blue yeah, but, yeah, but you're weird. <laughs> and I've also got my V God. Yeah, is... Daniel Daniel Black G class, he says he's common. <laughs> yeah, he's now got a black he's he's got a black G class. Welcome to the club, buddy. <laughs> I've seen his I've seen his black one. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And the G class too. That's for another show. Um, yeah, I've got the V God Elite with the V God Elite dripper on top, and in that, I have got this. Oh, Candy Crush! Oh, love to vape Candy Crush, and oh. look at the serial number. That's that's the expired yet. It's the batch number. Woo! Batch number one. Yeah, I've got the um, that full range for review. Um, the first review is recorded with three on it. Oh, now, really? Mm. I'll do the second review with the other three on it. Yeah, the first review covers um, the Candy Crush, the Berry Mellow, and the Harry Berry. That Harry Berry one's lovely, I'd um, say. So I was yeah. really impressed with that range. And if you can put yourself through watching my reviews. Hi, two, Andy. Did you just steal my trademark? You haven't trademarked it, um, VCR. So. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, Andy. Um, if you can put yourself through watching the two reviews, you can have a chance of winning the full range of six. I can't imagine ever saying that. Very, very oh, good Lord, sinner. Um. But yeah, so if you watch my reviews, you'll get. <laughs> oh, thanks. Um, you get yourself through. You have the chance of winning the full range of juices with next shots if you want them. Um, and on first first opinions, they are good, and they're made by a um, couple of local lads, Colin and Paul. Oh. From, yeah, Paul from vape shop, Lauren, vape, vape shop Lauren and Bendra Vapes. So. God, I love this hairy brow taste in your tongue. Nope, it doesn't sound right. Sinner, is that a purple hairy berry? Oh no, no, no. There, there's one of their juices is actually called purple nurple. Yeah, there's which is really, really yummy. Purple nurple. There is um. Crystal. crystal. If you like absinthe, if you like absinthe, you will love crystal. And. Oh, monkey, monkey crunch! Monkey oh. crunch! Oh, those are I. Very, very rare do I ever sample a complete juice range that I like every flavor. But those, I loved every flavor. Hence why I bought the entire range. <laughs> and yeah, Gil sent book because she hates absence. <laughs> she wouldn't like it. Good evening, Hi. Chris. Good evening, Chris. How are you, sir? How the heck are you? Saw your video. 
I it, haven't what I saw you posted the video, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I'll give that a watch later I on. I think. Watched it on my break at work, and made me late back into work again for my break. Oh dear. <laughs> Cheers, Chris. Blaming you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll I'll definitely have to give that a watch because I've been sort of keeping an eye on that story as it's been unfolding. So, yeah, I'll be watching that that one later, definitely. Hiya, Danny. So, yeah, we will be getting joined, folks, um, at some stage because he's away picking up his missus by Simon, Mr. Corito, um, who hopefully will be coming a regular feature on here. Um. You mean you mean you mean you mean the man that creates this beauty, this lovely masterpiece? Your purple's not coming out very purple on camera. Your camera. No, it never uh, does. Really, purple's a quite a hard colour to pick up. Here. It look it looks more like a blue, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, there's the blue just to. Yeah, just to contrast it. But yeah. And look, mine doesn't go round corners. Mine <laughs> Everyone. Too many to say hi to personally. I'm on my phone too. Yeah, no, no worries. So everybody that everybody that is. Oh, oh. Zan got orange ones. Orange. Yay. Um, to anybody that has said hi to Empire, he's on his phone, so he says hi back to you. That's for Chris. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so one of the things I was thinking about doing on this this show, um. I very sort of let Simon know a bit. Is we're going to take a 15 minute segment, it could last more, it could go less, that talk about something outside of vaping. So, something, a passion that somebody has outside of vaping. And tonight we're going to pick on Simon when he gets here <laughs> um, to do that. So, it's just to, just to find out what everybody else in chat thinks if it's a, a good idea. Oh, good God, sinner! I'm just going to ignore that. Uh, it, oh, it, once it's been seen, it cannot be unseen. Okay, we have an <laughs> intro. I think. Pardon? Simon's back, so I'll just give him a few minutes to compose himself. Yeah, cool. Let's talk about Zan tonight. He's been, well. Uh, Daniel, I don't blame you that. there because Zan, Zan is a wee sweetheart, and we'll just say it now. Massive thank you to Zan for. Uh, Stepping up and hosting us tonight, and yeah, he's he's been a busy boy the last few days with a few changes happening around the network and stuff. So Zan, you're a wee legend. Thank you. We. Oui. Yeah. He's a big legend. Oh, Matt Harter got a purple purple coily as well. You see, we're part of the purple club. Yay! Hello. <laughs> Good hey, evening, Simon. Simon. <laughs> Hello. Apologies for being late. Oh, you don't be sad. As um, I said to you in the message earlier, real life always has to come first. <laughs> when it's the wife, then that has to be. Exactly. Otherwise, you get slapped. That's it. Gonna... No yes, question. The wife, the wife is the boss. Remember this, and you will have a happy life. That's it. I've tw 20, 26, nearly 27 years now. So. And she hasn't you killed yet? You no. You must be doing no, something right. No, exactly. <laughs> Ah, I know what it is. You're keeping her supplied in coily tools. <laughs> Hang on a minute, something's happened. What? <laughs> the sound's just sitting there waving his hand. Where it is? <laughs> chat disconnected. Why is my chat disconnected? Oh, your internet's maybe dropped out for a little second. It does that sometimes. Mine did it the other night. Oh, back again. So. Oh. Who all got the purpley? Who all got the purpley coil or coilies? We were talking about coilies just before you came on, Simon. So I got the purple one. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Simon. By the way, and thank you very much for the coils as well. And you are more than welcome. Um, the another one went to uh, Megan, purple lady vapor. Uh, another one went to Michelle, Mad Hatter vapes. Another one went to. There's another three gone out this week, and I can't remember yeah. who they've all gone to. Yeah. Uh, Red Red Fox was saying she's getting a purple one. She is, yeah. Except she didn't want a purple lanyard. She wanted a she wanted a grey one. Ooh. So. Oh, Zan, what's that? King's custard. Which flavour? The original one. Ah. 
Yeah, it's Balance posting folks in chat that you can't see it, but it keeps popping up on the screen for us and, and moving out and getting <laughs> things. Yeah. I can't which sweets I sent, sent Zen either. Whether it was chocolate or Haribo. Hari, I, I call them Haribo. Haribo. Yeah. Oh, I, I got a chocolate bar. Did you like um, Bonnie's unboxing video? I did. Very good. Chocolate. Is that I chocolate? Was chocolate <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my chocolate bar's still there. I haven't eaten it that yet. Actually, yeah. no? That was actually an app on my phone. I was thinking, because when I started taking the video, it ran out. Well, it shows you one of webs. When it started, no. it, ran out of, it, it ran out of space on the internal and had to go to the, the external storage. So I ended up having two videos. So I was looking to see if I could edit them together. I wondered why there was that. two. Yeah. So, but I think Zan will want one of the green ones that you're doing. Yeah, they're uh, they're looking a lot more. Than they were this morning. Do your wee bit of magic then. Yeah. Um, Here we go. Here's the magic. Yeah. There you go, folks. I got that for the magic. They definitely are. There's no white bits left. You like those? Look at the big smile on wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice color of green as well. Uh, those are very nice. When are you doing blue and red? Hi, Ryan. Those? When am I doing what, Ryan? Red and blue two. Two tone. I can't do it. I, I wish I could, but it's it's a dual head printer, so one head has to do one colour and the other head has to do the support material, so I can't do two colour unfortunately. Which I'd like to do. Is that something you could maybe do whenever uh, you know, if you injection mould it? No, because again that's that's quite I suppose we could use resin so they could injection mould it with resin. Yeah. I'm doing very well, Ryan. How are you, sweetheart? Hi, you son. Um, Simon Beep City says, uh, "Tell Simon I said he's a sneaky S H I T and I need to work with him." So I said to Vape City Reviews, "I'll send you a coily free," and he said, uh, well, he, "He sort of evaded it." And then I didn't realise it was him that was going for the X ones on uh, on on Monday. Um, so he's he's paid for it, but uh, I, I I let him off the postage. So, uh, yeah, because he was all. It's typical. It's typical Daniel. You know, he gets caught up in the moment of things to start with, and then I was talking to him afterwards, and he says, "No, I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to get one on Monday." <laughs> that with two phones. It's maybe part of the excitement there. Yeah. So, yeah he's like a big kid. <laughs> it was. It was quite a. <laughs> I, I can't describe it. Normally, it's absolutely manic when you do it on a on a on a Monday, and it, it sort of it wasn't it wasn't quiet, but it seemed quieter this week, which is quite nice. It was a bit more steady. It wasn't as whether it was because everybody wasn't posting on the wrong um, on the wrong wrong post or not. I don't know. Commenting on the wrong post or not. I don't know. What was it twelve and a half seconds? Uh, it it was less than that. I think. It's, oh my god! That's how um, quick. That's how quick I was able to refresh. Um, it was about 13, about 13 odd seconds, and it was all gone. The number of comments. And the problem is, you can't see it. It doesn't sort it properly. You've got to leave it for about five minutes afterwards, until it sorts itself out into the proper time order. Because uh, it, it's it's all over the place for the first five minutes. Mm. Yeah, Daniel, you've got Craig on the naughty step beside you for a bit. Yeah. Uh, yes, Craig. Craig's on the wind up tonight, and he's uh, he's just been told off for it. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, just to let folks know, Ryan will be coming on a little bit later on as well to promote this. But I'm going to give a wee promote now while we're here. Um, these wooden plaques, um, custom made wooden plaques. My son makes them. Sooner give it time. <laughs> On his page, which is R and C Equine on Facebook, try and get the link here. Um, uh, R and C Equine on Facebook. There's a competition on there where you can actually win one of those. Um, and custom made to your own designs. They're great for kids' rooms. They're great for reviewers. They're great for Simon's. Simon's getting one made. I'm not telling you. Uh, what, I'm not telling you what your design is. No. We need you to send me your quality tool. Design. No, you don't. I've, I've been chatting to Ryan today on Facebook. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so, and he was he was asking me permission if you could use my uh, use the logo. So I said, yeah, no problem. Well, it's going up in your office anyway, isn't it? <laughs> I need one of these big green screen things behind me so I can have 
coiling up behind me. But there's there's not room. There's not room to swing a cat. Uh, swing a cat in here. <clears throat> I'm not pushing that far tonight. The line misses that. Oh God, sir. Vape City reviews. Hold that thought. There's three three new colours coming. I've I've actually I've actually had the three new colours colours delivered today. Have you? As well as the green, there's three new other ones as well. Nice. It's one of those. It's one of those. The uh, the grey metally colour one. Nope. Okay. And there's not an app in the box either. There's not what? Not an app in the box either. Mm. <laughs> not yet. Hey, have you ever thought of making an app? A good idea. Great idea, Roy. Shit, I should it before. <laughs> Shameless. <laughs> Shameless. But, um... So... I keep getting distracted by the chat. I need to really get my camera down beside me. The chat, I'll use the chat up to the camera. <laughs> and seeing everybody else. But I'm, I'm so far behind with the chat. With being late, I was in a mad panic. Didn't get the chat up. So if anybody said hello to me, I'm sorry. I've missed it. But... Just say hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. And if you want to say hello, I'll promise I'll say hello back. But um, you know, I'm still I'm still standing by that once everything calms down and you get your mass production ones in, mm -hmm. I am purchasing one of every color. Uh, <coughs> I, have placed, I have my order placed. Plus the metal one. Whenever you eventually do get it, no matter what the cost of it's going to be, I still. Well, I was on um, Scuba's hangout show on uh, Friday, Friday evening. Friday evening, yeah. Yeah, I watched that. Oh, yeah, and uh, there, was, there was somebody sent me an email after that show. Uh, after that show, um, hi MBK Vapors, uh, Vapor Review. Sorry, I was. Um, he sent me an email and said, "Oh, uh, I can I can sort out having a look at doing some CNC machine for you. Sort out a price over in the states." Um, so he's going to have a look and uh, and see what you can sort out. So awesome. we shall see. So I'm make sure there's about 2,000 colours. Release it, bankrupt Roy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing about it is, because, because I'm going for, um, no, it's ones that he's going to print, at least I know that he can only do <laughs> so many. He can only do, <laughs> because he's doing them have to do one colour at a time, it takes 20, 21 hours for each one. Yeah, and I need to do a colour change in between each one. Hi, Michelle. Yes, you're more than welcome for your uh, your purple coily. Um, yeah, it said if I do three, I've then got to change all the filament, which it's it's about it's, it's not long, 15, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. So, but that that's that's my weekend now. This weekend, because these three new colours, I only play playing around with them and uh, and seeing which ones which ones come out nice. You're not getting a sneak preview of any of them then. Not yet. Um, <laughs> oh, go on. Go on. Hi, John. The box is, is right do behind me. Do you reveal of one of the colours? <laughs> one of them is a is a tease. Somebody says I need to make them all bent, like your your blue one, the one that you got already. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Mark Andrews, yours is. Hang on a second. This was the other thing that I was doing tonight before while why I was late. <clears throat> Actually, I shouldn't show that, should I? Oh, but there right. it is, nearly, <clears throat> very nearly. But there's yours. There's yours, man. <clears throat> and um, if it's something like Royal Mail got got mine across to me in record time as well, I I couldn't believe I couldn't believe that it got there the next day. Absolutely couldn't believe it. I forgot I forgot you said it was signed for and. Knock at the door, and I was like, "What? The hell? I'm postman." I know, I know. Everybody says that it's over uh, expenses, but you're still in the UK. I know, but it's got to go on either a ferry or a plane to get there. You would think it would take that an extra day to do that last bit. You know, what actually happens though to a lot of the parcels um, from England, especially. Well, Yorkshire is straight across. Yorkshire's yeah, the Yorkshire North. A lot of it actually comes across to to Molusk and Glengormley. Right. They actually sort the stuff there and then send it back over to England to the different de depots in England. Right. The big, huge um, sorting factory, which a lot of the English stuff comes in by plane, gets put into there, gets sorted, and then sent back to England again. Blimey. That's bonkers. 
So it's one of the luckier ones that sort of stayed. <clears throat> but it's usually the, the, so, so. I mean, all all the ones that I've sent, the UK ones tend to get there next day. So the, the UK first class signed for get there first day. Uh, sorry, mm-hmm. next day, and the American ones sort of get there within anything between five to ten days. Apart from one that I sent to Canada last week, which went to Portugal, and is still still sat in Portugal, apparently waiting to be shipped back to Canada. So, must have very good relations between Portugal and. to where it's supposed to be. Yeah, I, I I haven't a clue why it went that way. I'm not <laughs> a clue at all. So. Yeah, we do tend to keep football off the network because it does cause <laughs> cause causes rows. But we don't you know it's normally uh I think my G box is giving up the ghost. What? No, got it. G box is playing up. So uh, what are you are your battery contacts loose maybe? No. No? No. It's just keep switching itself off around again. But one of the things um, what we'll be doing in a, a short while is are we allowed to talk about certain certain singers? Can we? Oh, I knew what he's getting at there. What, Nickelback? Uh, no, probably Bonnie Tyler. Oh. But um, one of the things we will be doing um, on this show with Arms Mighty going forward is talking about a Ryan. Do not break my bonnets. Outside, outside of vaping. Um, and Simon will be the one that's tonight. <sighs> so, do I, I, I need to tell you about something that I do. Not vape related. Something that's something not vape related, just, just to, so people can get to know you. Ooh. Chris. Chris is back. He's cooking his tea. What, are we having an intimate supper this evening? <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. Too easy. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. The, the, the more interesting thing is I used to be a biker, and I mentioned that. But I've not had a bike now for about nine years. But it was big bikes. It was big sports bikes. So I wasn't, I'm not interested in Harley Davidsons and trial bikes and things like that. So it was all... Bikes. Yeah, Fireblades and GSXR 600s and Kawasaki ZX 6Rs, all that. They, they were my real sort of bikes. thing. Yeah, yeah, proper ones. Real bikes. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but I've not, I've not done it for a while, so, so I'm a bit out of touch. My way of length there. Yeah, I, I just, I, I still. So I never. Did I think I probably bought one bike from a dealer? The rest of the bikes I used to go and buy from um, uh, breakers. So the the sort of Cat D, Cat C crash damage bikes. Mm. Uh, and I'd spend six months getting them all restoring done up, them. back up, mm-hmm. yeah, restoring them, and and then I'd ride them for six months, sell it on, and then do another one. So uh, I, 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 there's just a real kick out of, and I never used to do it. it. It was never custom. It was always I always used to get it as it was, uh, as a as a standard bike. Yeah. And I absolutely loved it. Just loved playing around with engines. Loved playing around with all doing all the plastic welding on the fairings and things like that. Absolutely oh, yeah. loved it. Oh yeah, so. I I'm I used to be at my happiest. My um, my ex boyfriend from a few quite a few years ago. He was very much on his bikes, and I used to just for shits and giggles go and sit in the front garden and polish his. <laughs> he just never used to take loved... into the house then. Uh, well, he had a little Honda, a little one two five Honda, which right. um, he used to be able to get into the spare bedroom of his flat. Because he hadn't a garage or anything like that, so he used to bring it in and um, put it into the, the spare bedroom. And I used to keep him going, saying that he was tucking it in for the night. <laughs> um, but yeah, I used to uh, when he bought the Suzuki, I used to sit and polish that. He had a the, he had a big Suzuki RF four hundred. Right. And I used to uh, there was quite a lot of chrome work, you know, and the exhaust yeah. was lovely and shiny and stuff, and that was my job. I sat and polished all polished that. It. And, it was quite yeah. therapeutic as well. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah. yeah. And then he had uh, he had a SV six fifty. All right. As well, and he had a bad accident that a few years ago. Some dozy woman talking on her mobile phone wasn't looking yeah. what she was doing. Ran a red light and straight into him. Yeah. So. It's- 
it's one of those that, I mean, my wife doesn't like me having a bike. She she always said before I got one, you're not having one, you're not having one, you're not having one. And I said, no, nah, I, I want one. And I took my test, did everything, got a bike. And she said, I'm not getting on it. And and I took her out the first time, and that was it. She was absolutely hooked. She loved it, yeah. It's the adrenaline. There's there's nothing <coughs> nothing better than getting on a you bike. Can't get, and, there's no feeling of freedom like it. No, nah, no. Nah, it's... it's you get the air, you get the speed. It's just, uh, it's lovely. It's a drug. You can yeah. you can understand why, you know, the racers why they get so passionate about oh, yeah. it. You know, because yeah. like they do that for fun. <laughs> yeah, no, I just I, I loved it, and and the only reason I got rid of it, we we had our kitchen extended, so I, the the garage I had to lose half of the garage, um, so we had no space All to leave the bike. Yeah, Mike. My claim to fame on the bike on the bike inside of things is I've been around the Ulster Grand Prix circuits. Have on you on done the, that? The JPS Norton is the late, is the late, late Robbie Dunlop. Yeah, Robert Dunlop. Robert. Yeah. yeah. That that was oh, the one. Speaking of speaking of Robert Dunlop, Simon, have you heard the news about what Robert's son is doing this year? No. Robert's son Michael has signed for Tyco BMW. Oh right. For the big international road races. Blimey. Yeah. So that's going to be interesting. And mm. Guy Martin announced uh, yesterday that he's confirmed for doing the Tandra Gay this year as well. Right. That's okay. good. And then just, just this is a sidetrack from biking. Um, Maggie has asked a question. What's your favourite music, Simon? What's my favourite? Music. Right, so I used to DJ as well. But I was a party DJ. I wasn't one of these where I was... You know, spinning the discs, it was all YMCA and Macarena and Cha Cha Slide and stuff like that. Um, so I love, I, I love cheesy music. I used to love the end of the night, and we used to there was like it was like a cheesy music session always at the end of the night. It was uh, um, Neil Diamond, Sweet Caroline, Country Roads. I love that song. Uh, New York, New York, all that sort of stuff. But that's not it. my my favourite music. I like um, Coldplay. I like Green Day. I like The Killers. Um, Pet Shop Boys because I'm an 80s boy I absolutely love the Pet Shop Boys I've been to see them five or six times in concert uh, and they're absolutely brilliant I'll go, go again to the next concert as well um, Go West Yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, That's West And yes Craig I have met Guy Martin several times he's probably uh, one of my dearest friends actually I've known him since 2001 So mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I don't, I don't have a, 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 a sort of a real favourite in music. It's just those, like I said, the Coldplay, the 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 Killers, Green Day. That's that's my sort of stuff yeah. that I can listen to. Noel said I can listen to pretty much anything. Forever Young is amazing. It is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's another one, another end of the night track though. Um, uh, kill, uh, Killers, Mr. Brightside. Again, you you get in a, a a young a young party. That's that's brilliant. At the end of the night. Yeah, you just scream your lungs out to that yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or House of Pain, jump around. That's another one as well. <laughs> <clears throat> I did. Um, I remember doing a disco a long time ago for it was in a, a little country pub, and I don't know what they had on the floor, but it was really bouncy. Yeah, you, you, Amarello. There's another one. Yeah. If you're oh, playing, yeah, yeah. like really cheesy music, Amarello, yeah. definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anything that gets people going around the uh, yeah, the buffet's open. Chris, Empire Vape Co. That's <laughs> cool. I'm on my way. <laughs> well, I to Liverpool. The funny thing was with, with the discos when just talking about the the buffet was open, you used to do all the the announcements and things like that. And I always said, I mean, I never made any money out of it. It was I I, I used to. Um, I, uh, I used to sort of do the discos and everything that I made out of it, I used to buy sort of new stuff and, and things like that. Um, but it got to the point, especially after the smoking ban came in, um, where, you know, people weren't allowed to, to smoke in venues. Um, it just it became sort of really, really difficult to do discos because people just would, would go outside. The whole point in DJing is to keep a dance floor going. Um, and because so many people were going out for smoke, you, you just the dance floor was up and down and up and down and up and down and that was one of the reasons that I, I stopped doing it. It just it just absolutely killed it. I would say it would do. It's not you know it was changing now with more people vaping. Mm. It's allowing people to vape indoors. Yeah. Like I know one of the the local hotels actually does allow people to vape in the in the hall now. 
Yeah, you see, we, we don't have many places. I think we have about sort of maybe three or four places around where I live that allow you to vape. But I would love that's that's my dream. I, I, I used to be a chef when I when I left school. Um, and my dream is to open a, a restaurant where you can vape in there. So like a a, a proper a proper restaurant bar where everybody can vape. It's it's you know it, it's not if if people don't want to come in because people are vaping that's fine. But it would be a, a vaping restaurant. That's that's my my dream. You know that's really it, scary. Would you call because... it cooking at the, cooking at the coily? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's really scary because I've worked in catering since I left school. Right. Uh, which I'm just I'm going to be finishing tomorrow. Um, but a few years ago, I always had the idea in my head of opening a vape shop, a vape shop stroke coffee shop. Yeah. You know, yeah. to combine the both. But that's the thing, isn't it? It's all about socialising. It's all about being able to to socialise around people. And I think. Hi, hey, TBD. When when I. I mean, when I was a smoker, that was the thing that I enjoyed was actually going and sitting with a group of people and socialising, being able to sit and have a drink and and you know talk and relax and everything else. Mm -hmm. And it just has no appeal to me. Um, yes, deal. Cake and vape. Cake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it it just has no appeal for me to go and sit in the pub now and just and just drink. And it, I, I I would just love to open somewhere if, where everybody can sit down. And... Yeah, if you're lucky enough to find a bar that doesn't mind if you vape in it, then you're laughing. But mm. ninety percent of like bars and clubs and that just shove you out with the smokers, and yeah. I give up smoking for a reason. <laughs> you know, so. but it's it's not just that, is it? I mean, you go into one of these places, and you're still going to get the people that are going to sit there going, oh, 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 like that when you yeah. you vape. And it's... And Gibber's wife. Don't cut as much. Don't cut his hair. It was hey, Mrs. Much. Goober. Hi, Mrs. Goober. She's crackers. <laughs> Mrs. Goober. Mrs. Goober is crackers. Is she? Yeah. I I've not met her. They, I called in. I called in to Goober one night, and she was there. Was there when Goober was doing a live, and she is just as crackers as Goober is. <laughs> works crackers as well. Um, Mark says the wife makes good carrot cake. Oh, I love carrot cake. Mm -hmm. I pretend it's good for me because it's got cream cheese instead of butter icing on top. But yeah, but and it's carrot, so you're getting your vegetables. Exactly, one of one of your five a day. Yeah. And Colin, he used to Colin, um, he used to do DJing as well. He sold up. Wasn't the same whenever the smoking band came in. No. It... No, the smoking band definitely ruined like a Friday night out for me. Mm. It really did. And then Vic has uploaded the part two about Vapor Round. Or what's up, part two of the Vapor Round? Go watch after this show. No. It'll still be there come 10 o'clock. It'll still be there to go and watch, go and watch it then. Mm. What a change. Yeah, Chris uploaded his earlier this afternoon as well, which I will be watching later. Uh, so, yeah, I'll, I'll check out both of those later. But, um, I, I saw that pop up on my timeline. I've just not had time to, to watch anything yet. There you go, Simon. If you go to if you go to the expo, Gail's making um, carrot. Yes. Cake. Now, Angel, a... Angel, definitely carrot cake is unbelievably good. It really is. It's surprisingly, you don't think carrots in a cake works, but in this case, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Simon. What were you going to say there? So, so here's the funny thing. I was talking to uh, Mark at Nature Valley the other day, mm -hmm. um, and he says. I was talking about Expo, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to know whether I can go. And he said, oh, I've, I've got, uh, got some, some tickets if you want some tickets. I said, oh, yeah, I'd love to. And I looked at the dates. It's it's the 4th of May, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. May the 4th be with you. Yeah. My birthday is the 3rd of May. And... Uh, Pike, we'll meet you in the pub. And... <laughs> <laughs> my wife is taking me to Derby for the weekend. And Derby is literally just up the road from Expo. So... Yeah. <coughs> I did. I did broach the subject. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> well, uh, well, we're in Derby for my birthday. <laughs> it might be quite nice to have a visit to the NEC. Oh yes. So. And uh, how awesome. did Mrs. Coyley react to that? She, she, she wasn't. Um, she didn't dismiss it. So. Progress. She did say, "If you want to go, that's fine." So I'm oh, quite sure. that's the. That's the. Go. <laughs> you go. You're dead. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I I think it, it 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 could work. I'll 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 try and see. Folks, just to point out a, a new Nightbot command that's actually that is now popped in. 
um, which is write to your MP and ask of their support in the Electronic Cigarettes Regulations Bill 2017-2019 um, and get make sure you get as many MPs as possible to sign up. Yeah. Gailey Bops, Mrs. Coyley doesn't drink at all. She's um, she's teetotal. It's all right. But, we can drink her share. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't think she's drunk since since she was about sixteen. Not that she was drinking at sixteen, because so that's obviously no, legal. But I don't even I don't think it's just you know Gail doesn't need it. That's okay. And there's a few of us. There's quite a few others don't drink, but just get her into the get her into the, the clan. She she doesn't need a drink. She's very. I'm I'm quite a an introvert person. I think she's she's with complete opposite. She's very extrovert. She's very bubbly and she'll talk for she'll talk me under the table. By the time, by, by the time they get, um, by the time she gets into the bits of the beast work plan, be no Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got, when you've got Gailey, Purple Lady, and Bonnie. Oh, she'd, yeah, she'd been her, she'd been around. She doesn't, she doesn't vape either, unfortunately. Yeah, She's never, never smoked. Mrs. Corley doesn't need a drink. I'm judging by that, Red Fox, you do, you do, you do enjoy a little um, tip or three. Well, she made short work of that bottle of wine when she was on my Vic on Thursday night, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> did you, you did you happen to catch that show on Thursday night? I, I, I which that show? That was on? epic. Um, Vic's, 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 um, yes, 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 show. I did. That was yeah. epic. Yeah. Red Fox, hats off to you, lady, because yes, you she have, was... you... You're probably the only person on the part the on the planet that can cause Mark Roberts to take a red face. <laughs> that was epic. Not just once but twice. <laughs> that was epic. <laughs> she drank half the wine. Wait, what'd you do the other half? Spill it. <laughs> I must be honest, when I read Carrot Cake I thought this sentence was slang and mean, you know what? Oh no, Angel, it's not that kind of show. <laughs> Me thinks Angel's been speaking to Sinner too much. <laughs> Watch out, the there's big, quite a tag dog on the list. The big yeah, dripper, I didn't say hello to you. I saw, I saw you say hello. Earlier. I can't multitask. I, I'm, I'm useless. I'm useless at multitasking. I would bet like me. <laughs> We're in the club. It's a man thing. It is, that's what I'm told. <clears throat> See if... I have it safe when I can come on, come and hang with Bunny Gale on purple. Yeah. Oh, she's saving the other, but don't no, don't worry about that. Just buy another ball. <laughs> and red, see if you're hanging with um, Gale, Bunny, and purple. You'll need a bottle. You'll need a. You'll probably need a bottle of absinthe. Excuse me. <laughs> Are you saying I drive people to drink? <clears throat> no. Choose your words carefully. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pardon? You force them to drink. <laughs> Dan, don't you start. You're meant to be on my side. There's John, has got his coil yet. Another one's made it. Good news, John. Yeah. Yay! Whereabouts are you, John? John's down south of England somewhere, I think. Yeah. From what I can remember. Somerset, I think. I think. So it was it was an absolute mad rush packing them tonight. It was it was crackers. <clears throat> and I'm I'm still I've still got a couple of review samples that I'm short as well that I need to send out, so printers yeah, printers gonna be going mental. Mondays. Now there'll be some there'll be some go out on Saturday now. So the majority of all of the all of the ordered ones go out today, plus half dozen review samples, plus Red Fox is one that's going out as well. Uh, and uh, Ryan, it's not as if I had to twist your arm, my dear. And Ryan, you drove us there. Pardon? And Ryan drove us there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually your fault because you were the one that offered to drive home. <clears throat> Thank you, my anger. <clears throat> I got um, I got this little thing today as well. 
What is that? It's the um, oh, the Great Berserker RDA. That's nice. I it's, uh, I re I've, I've only put it on. Uh, I, I built it later this afternoon and, and sort of been vaping it since about five o'clock. Did we use the coiling? Uh, no, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. <coughs> it was a. <laughs> Pardon? It's, I, I tried putting a, 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 a sort of a, a Clapton coil in it, it just wouldn't fit properly. So I, I did a little round wire, round wire build, cantle round wire build. So I just put it straight in and snipped it. Hiya, Hiya. Darren. Hiya, Bree. Oh, nice, nice job on the pens today, Darren. They look fantastic. And Red Fox says for Sheen. Hey Michelle B. Hi Michelle B. How are you? Hi Michelle B. Um, John Nash, the the coils. So I send usually send coils out with the with the review samples. Everybody else gets sweets. And I think for the last two weeks, I sent out some samples of uh, of King's Custard as well. They've run out now. Uh, all gone. Well, I mean, the pubs got to, I noticed the Bam and the pubs there at King's Custard end. Another. Banana. Yes, they're they're on. They have uh, banana and they have the original custard and they have is it cinnamon as well. Cinnamon, yeah. yeah. And uh, and Ballam in a vape club, they are on offer at two for twenty pounds. Love it. Shameless plug. So. <laughs> <laughs> I I really like it. They're bringing out some new flavours as well. I think very soon. Oh, so. good. I'll have to try those. And big big Dipper says the custard is beautiful. I, I really like it. I, I like it in a dripper. Um, I, I, I vape it in a tank as well. But it, my my all day vape is either King's custard or or anything that has the words just jam in it. So just jam down up is the favourite. Just well, jam I, sponge. I just picked this one up today from Titan. Uh, it's uh, Titanic's e liquid, but I picked it up from uh, Vape Club today. This is bubble gum, and it's gorgeous. Is it? Yes, very much so. I don't think I've had a bubblegum vape yet. I quite like my bubblegum vapes. Whenever mm. I first started vaping, when I was making the switch from the tobacco flavours, bubblegum was one of the first um, that helped to take me away from tobacco flavours. <laughs> so. I've never, I've never had, I've never vaped. I think when I first started vaping, I tried a little one of the when I was on the 18 milligram 50 50 juices. I, I yeah. tried a tobacco one, hated it, and I've never vaped a tobacco one since. I've still got, and Jay will shout at me because I've still got um, the, his his tobacco one up there that I don't vape yet. Um, no, so. I, don't, I don't do tobaccos anymore. I haven't I haven't done for two and a half years. I'm just I'm just terrified. It will make me want to smoke again. Absolutely terrified. Oh, Michelle's ordered some lemon lush and she realised that she won't get it until Tuesday or Wednesday. It'll be an Easter weekend. <gasps> oh, that sucks. Oh, and Red, was he been out in America? Um, I mean, I've tried Aries JJ coils. We can get them out there a lot easier than we can get them over here. You know, yeah. Higgy, Higgy Sig sells them. Um, he's a good friend of the, and host and cast on the network as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Aries. Um, yeah, I guess. Um, I'd, I'd, I will be ordering some uh, of Aries coils because I want to order some Higgy Six juices as well. Yeah, some of the, the Higgy Six juices, they're Knickerbocker Glory. <gasps> so yeah, uh, Knickerbocker uh, Glory is amazing. They, they told, what was I advised? Aries Ram. Aries Ram is gorgeous. Pegasus yeah. Tears. Uh, Pegasus Peach, Tears was the other one, yeah. Peach Tree Street is another one. All right, that which is one. very, very good. Um, Pear Champagne. Yeah. And the uh, peach bellini as well. There's a, there's another one that was it was it um, uh, I can't believe it was called. Hey Death Star. Hey Death Star. A haze, was it a nuts? Oh. Nello nuts. That's it. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that uh, Nello nuts is probably Higgy's most popular one. Yeah. Um, it's the one everybody sort of refers to when when you say hey you know Higgy sags that's usually the first thing that comes out of their mouth then's Nello nuts so. Yeah. Uh, yes, and a pair of champagne. But awesome Nilla, stuff. It's Nilla Nuts. Whenever you watch the show, it's normally Nilla Nuts and Aries Rams always vying for the top spot. Yeah, for the flavour of the week. 
So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some ordered. Get some of uh, Harry's gold. She's got so many flavors. If you like uh, like a lemon cake type one, she um, does one that's called Lemon Twinkle. It's like a lemon drizzle cake, and it is really nice. Yeah. Have you ever had Momo's uh, drizzle drink? I have. Drink? Yeah, yeah. It's almost identical to is Momo's it? drizzle drink. See, I quite like this. Uh, the one I've been vaping on. I think I started it last week. Um, the the just jam lemon, lemon sponge. I really because I went right off lemon. I used to vape nothing but lemon, uh, lemon tart by dinner lady. That was all I vaped, and I just got sick of it. I just, I just mm -hmm. put me right off vaping lemon liquids. But I've just, got, I've got back into this now. Yeah, Gail, Gail's a, the lemon aficionado. Yeah, Savage does a beautiful lemon. Oh yeah, the Savage, the Savage lemon is oh <coughs> wow, <laughs> it's really, really good and lemon. Lemon glaze donut, dude. Yeah. Mm. It's not. Hmm. It's not really sharp lemon. It's a. It's a. It's a smooth lemon. It's a smooth, yeah. Really sweet lemon with a, a very the, the donut does sit very in the background on it. So I, I I never found a donut that I really liked and and I, I got the just sham one and then there was another one that I got which I really liked as well. I to be honest, like, yeah, you would I love donut, donut, dude. Yeah. Because to be honest, I was never really a fan of donut vapes either. Because to me, they just taste like sort of burnt deep fat fryer. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, they, they taste. They had a bit of a strange taste. The yeah. ones I, the ones I really liked and were really difficult to buy were the ones by um, Mike Vapes. Um, oh, they're called. I've still got some. I bought some and I don't finish it because I just like them so much. I do that as well. Ah. You get you find a juice that you really really like, and you get yeah. to about this much left in the arse of it, and you think, no, I'm not vaping that because I don't want it to run out. That's like, it. Um, Sinner, Sinner done me a rhubarb and custard one um, for Expo last year. And you still got that bit. I still have that bit left because I just don't want it to run out. So <laughs> the, just, oh. My my favourite ever there was a liquid called Bear Grape, um, as in B A R E. Um, and I bought, I think it was a hundred or an eighty mil bottle, something like that. And it was, it's just the nicest great liquid I've ever had. And I've still got it, it's still on my shelf up there. I think there's about five mil left in the bottom of it, and I just, I can't bring myself to to finish yeah. it. I just want to save it. Yeah, one no. of my all, <laughs> one of my all time favorite uh, e liquids up until I went to Expo last, uh, in October was. Um, Cali Colada by Liquid State. Right. Uh, that was probably my all time favourite. And then I went to Expo in October and I got some juice there, which was a strawberry pina colada. And I have to say, it is probably the nicest juice I have ever had. See, I, was, I have this habit of finding them. Good. I have a habit of finding them and then can never get them again after. That's it. Red Fox and, and TBD have just said hit that juice. Uh, hit that juice and hit that donut. Hit that juice. There's a, um, a peach one that's really, really nice. And then hit, hit that donut. There's like, a, I'm sure it's a coffee, a raspberry and a blueberry or something like that. But they're just so, so nice. Oh, well, you've yeah, probably you just piqued Roy's interest there. I don't do coffee vapes, but he quite likes them. So If you, if you can't taste anything, I would recommend that. That will clear anything. <laughs> That will bring your taste buds back. <laughs> I just put into, I just put that into my into my new toy. Hi, Sloan. Hi, Sloanster. So, so that's oh, my, my new toy. Have you got the absinthe in that? I just put the absinthe into it now. Yeah. Oh, go on then. See if it kills you or not. <laughs> yeah, that was my thought as well, but it was wow. When, when you say absinthe, I assume it's an absinthe juice and not pure absinthe that you've had. Oh, it's absinthe juice. <laughs> yeah, it's absinthe flavoured. Juice. And it is gorgeous. Is it? Lovely. And by the way, what else? We've seen your preserve. What are you vaping on tonight? What am I vaping on? So I'm on. Um, yeah, we've the, already done ours. It's your turn. Yeah, the Geek Vape. I'm actually quite. I'm a bit boring tonight. Geek Vape Blitzen uh, on top of the Sirius, the, the Graphite. What's boring about it? Well, because oh, it's. My it, it, <laughs> I, I, I have the blue one. I just wanted the the graphite one. Yeah, it's because it's just. It, it's not boring, but I just really like the flavour from the Blitz and really like it, and the fact that it it just never leaks. It's it's brilliant. I've, 
I've not tried the Blitzen yet. I have a friend that has one, and he can't get on with it. Mm. No, you see, I, I've. It's uh, right. I'm gonna. I'm gonna plug Coily here now. It's. Yeah. It's, it's the coil position. It is so much the coil position. Mm. Um, so I went on on the Coily um, website the other night to the Leglings page, um, and I looked to see what the people have put down. And I think there's one. One was six point five mil legs. One was uh, four point five. And I tried it at six point five, and the flavour was just. It was flat. Dropped it down to five point five, and it just pops really really does right. um, so yeah it's, it's absolutely coil position on that um, but the flow is, is, is just so so good the only thing I don't like about the Blitzen is it's it's a real pain in the ass to get apart to get the bottom off it's it's like really tough to, to uns unscrew it there's like there must be some sort of rubber seal or something it's quite tough to, to undo and well, and, the, and the airflow doesn't stop yeah, if you pack it too much that's what can cause the chimney to be tighter against the no, it's it's not. It's even when you even when there's nothing in it. So when the tank's empty and you're just trying to take the bottom off, it's it's there's like a lot of friction when you try to turn it off, and the airflow spins as well. So you can't get a good grip on the tank to turn the base of it. Oh god! And that's the only thing that I don't like about it. Yeah, like I said flavour. Pernil and blackcurrant. <sighs> yeah, my mum used to love pernil and blackcurrant. Mississippi mud. Mm. Pernil and black. That's so eighties, isn't it? Isn't yeah. it? You can tell we're the 80s kids. Yeah. yeah. Pernil and Orange was another one that used to be quite popular back in the day as well. There was a lot of people used to drink it. Do people still drink lager and wine? Yes. Do they? I think, yeah, I think there's some yeah. people still do. Yeah. There's a lager and lime and lager and blackcurrant as well. That was another yeah, one. snake bite. Cider and blackcurrant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Gotta, should... love a, gotta love a wee snake bite. Uh, baby sham. I was I was watching a program the other night baby about. Baby yeah. um, Martini. Oh uh, yeah, martini <laughs> lemonade. Yeah. There was a program about wines, and they were talking about blue nun. Um, and I never realised that blue oh, nun God, is. That's horrible. Yeah, it's actually wine mixed with grape juice. I, yeah. I never never knew that. So it's basically alcoholic grape juice mixed yeah. with grape juice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See you later, and we'll see you um, see you in chat tomorrow night at Picks. Definitely. Catch you later. Two weeks in. <laughs> uh, it's nice when you get American folk coming in, saying hi and hi and. Yeah, yeah, and Red Red's amazing. <clears throat> she, she's a lovely, lovely girl. She was hilarious when I was watching her on the show the other night. She was absolutely hilarious. Especially when she produced that unicorn onesie, that was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> it was. yeah a unicorn onesie. I, I like the unicorn, but I've never known a unicorn to have wings, ever. Yeah. Hold on. That unicorn may be bred with a Pegasus, though. Yeah. Mm. The unicorn tears was Pegasus' wings. <laughs> you juice. Mm. I, I... Pitch that one to Jen, see what she can come up with. Uh, <laughs> Vic needs a unicorn onesie. Yes, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay to see that. <laughs> you know, that would be more of a Shetland pony. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they could get one the kid size for him. <clears throat> I do have I'm a monkey. I'm still going to die for that comment, probably. <laughs> I, I have a monkey onesie somewhere. I'm not quite sure where it is. I, I'm, not, I'm not desperate to find it either. Yeah. <laughs> No. <laughs> I've got I've got an e I've got an Eeyore onesie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can well, it was purple, so the only I have to get it. The onesie I own is my skin. Okay. That was fairly deep, right? <laughs> Shinzano is the first stuff I got. I remember having Shinzano New Year's Eve when I was about ten. I was forced fed Shinzano at twelve mm -hmm. o'clock to drink. And I've never touched the stuff since. Michelle, yeah, that's our national animal. We show the unicorn one. Yeah, the national yeah, animal you, of Scotland. Could you imagine that, Gail, all us lot rocking up to uh, Expo wearing unicorn <laughs> onesies? <laughs> that make for an interesting group photo. <laughs> I do that in October when it's last warm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, until Rebecca, it probably will be freezing in May. 
<sighs> soda stream. Hey? So we said about soda stream on there. Oh, there's so something today about putting wine through a soda stream. Warning: if you try, be careful how you take the picture. <laughs> I'm guessing that's someone that's eligible for the Darwin Award as well. It's warm now. T-shirt is out. Yeah, right. Just because you're a hardy outdoor type. And Big Dipper's got two Superman and a camel. We're trying to get. We're trying to get a six foot five. One day is not easy. <laughs> well, I'm six foot three. Sit well, nearly six foot four, and I I got the, a monkey onesie, and Did I think it was I think it was a Primark. I was a bit slimmer at the time, but it was I think, I'm sure it was from Primark. At least I'm going to feel if Darren's if Darren goes to the Expo, a big dripper's there, and if you come, I'm just going to feel right at home because I'm not I can talk ITA level with these all. I'm not having to look down all the time. <laughs> yeah, I guess everybody else on the network's on midgets. How tall are you, Bunny? Five foot seven. You found taller. Bonnie's taller than most of the blokes. <laughs> Vic's Especially sort of... Solom. Solom is shorter than Vic. Vic and me are about the same height, <clears throat> and Solom is about an inch shorter than Vic. See, this is the problem, isn't it? When you see everybody on the reviews. So, I mean, I've I've not met anybody. So, when you see people, you only see them from you know sort of chest upwards, eh? Yeah. So you can't really gauge how no. tall people are. It's not until you meet them. <laughs> Gail says but Roy's yeah. a perfect height for a punch in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you need your step ladder, Gail, trust me, I've tried. <laughs> same with last year outside the hotel, um I stand out having a vape and everything else, Bunny and I was there and little bro vapes comes walking out. All right. for a little lift. And it's like hi Aiden and everything else. And I literally did turn around and say to you, Where's Mark? Mark was standing beside him. Really? Mm -hmm. I can vouch for that. Uh, I honestly didn't see him. <coughs> I was sort of looked, oh, there he is. I, li that. I, I, I like, I've, I've yes. chatted, chatted a bit with Mark. Okay, I've chatted a bit with Aiden as well. I mean, yeah. that, Mark and Aiden are only for, just from down the road, from, from what I'm saying, just down the road. They're about 40 miles away from where I live. That is, just down the road when you live in England. Yeah, so, so they're, they're uh, fellow Yorkshiremen, and they're just they're brilliant. Yeah, yeah, they are. We we had such a laugh at the hotel in October. Yeah. I just we just spent the whole weekend laughing. It was brilliant. Yeah, because we just literally come back back down again open, after the expo. We saw them saw them at the expo, and we come back to the hotel and sort of freshened up and come back down to the bar. And Bonnie and I sat down at one table, and this other table, then there was Mark and Aidan and Jan and. Lou. Lou. We're there at a table. And the next minute, they're like, ah, oh, come on over and join us. And yeah. over, and it was just, that was it. The last started. <laughs> yeah. And that was it the whole weekend then. It was just continual. It was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant weekend. So, uh, one month, five days, three hours, 56 minutes, and 33 seconds. And we're going to do it all again. <laughs> I, I, I really need to twist my wife's arm. I do. But, um, you know, it's like, even the Thursday night, because Bonnie and I is going over on the Wednesday night boat to Liverpool. Spend the day in Liverpool, probably call up. I don't know where Chris's shop is. It's not that far out of um, Liverpool city centre for us to sort of jump a taxi and go up, go up and see, go up and see Empire shop. Yeah. Um, he has said for us, let him know that we're that we're calling up and he'll be there. Yeah. Um, so get the day in Liverpool basically, and then get the train down to to Birmingham that night. Hi, we Gary. And Purple Lady's going to be there on the Thursday night, and so is Mark and Aiden. Right. Yeah, me, Roy, and Ball Sonic are uh, going to be travelling together because Balls is coming over from America, and right. he's landing with us. Oh, right. In uh, Northern Ireland, he's going to be landing with us on the Tuesday, yeah. and then we're travelling over on the Wednesday all together. Yeah. So. Yeah, three good. of us are the three of us are hitting Liverpool, and then we're going to get the train down. So. But it's, it's, it makes sense because we get the overnight. Last year we travelled due to a, a mess up myself. I booked the flight for the wrong day. I booked the flight for the Wednesday instead of the Thursday. Mm -hmm. so we missed the flight. That was panic stations. I had two hour panic of trying to get something organised for the next day. So we ended up getting the boat. So we got the boat over in the Thursday daytime. Now it's me, our Salem from Belfast, Liverpool. 
Yeah. But that during the daytime, the chairs aren't the most comfortable to try and sleep in. No. Um, so what we decided to do, we'll go on the Wednesday night, have a cabin. So it means you can you know, have a bit of sleep. Cover, then sleep. Get a shower and everything else in the cabin so you're nice and fresh for the next day. Yeah. Yeah, because by the time we got to the hotel the Thursday night, we had been on the go from 8 o'clock in the morning and it was 11 o'clock that night before well, we I even mean. walked in through the doors of the hotel. Yeah, so great. by the time we got there, we were absolutely shattered. But yeah. it, uh, he was going and checking his end. I went straight through to the bar and bought a pint. <laughs> <laughs> but then they couldn't find my reservation. And yeah, so I, that was fun. And so I poked through my emails and... There it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can you vape on the boats now? Yeah, you go out on the deck. Ah, uh, you got to go out on the deck. Yeah. But in the room, I'll be vaping. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, as long as they don't have smoke detectors or anything like that, that you know, lets off there's, sirens in the middle of the night. There's a toilet, so you just vape. Low, flush. Vape, flush. Low, flush. Yeah. <laughs> So I used to go to, I worked in Belgium a lot of years ago, and it was that you were allowed to smoke on the boats then. Uh, unfortunately, I, I stopped um, I stopped going over there before the smoking ban came in, because that would have just driven me nuts. Because it, it was a 12, yeah, just over 12-hour boat trip from, from Hull to, to Zeebrugge. Yeah. And I did that every week. No, if I had to go that length of time yeah, without a vape, I would probably good. murder someone. <laughs> um, Michelle... The one thing I would say, the, the sailing between Belfast and Liverpool is the smoothest sailing out of any of them. Yeah, it if is. Go, if you go Belfast to Scotland, you've got the Irish Sea meeting the Atlantic there. And if you go Dublin to Liverpool or Dublin to Holyhead, you've got the Irish Sea meeting the English Channel. So they both collide against each other. Whereas if you go across the middle, it's the smoothest you'll get. Plus, it, with it being a, a cargo ship, It'll be quite full of the the fuller it is with cargo, the whole the boat steadier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ryan went the the Dublin Holyhead, and I I hit, I did that once. When I lived in England, coming back, I went Dublin Holyhead, hated it. I tried the Liverpool Dublin, hated it. I tried the Cairn Ryan to to Larne, it was at that stage, hated it. On that many a time, but the Belfast Liverpool was the only one I ever took. Belfast to Shinar was just awful. Yeah, it is. It's just a yeah, horrible... I've, I've been to, uh, you know, I've done the Belfast to Shinar a few times, and I've always been, lucky enough, I've got a pretty smooth sailing um, on that one. Uh, going, I've been on the boat from Belfast to the Isle of Man, and going to the Isle of Man from Belfast was fine, but when you're coming back out, that's it gets pretty rough when you're coming that's back out, well, because you, go, you pretty much go, you do a lap of the island. Really, because you're coming out from Douglas Port, you're going right around Ramsey Head and coming up by the Point of Air. So you're actually sailing up the coast of Scotland to get across to Belfast. And it's the same on when you're going over, you go in round that way as well. But it's smoother going in round than it is coming out. The last time I did the um, Can Ryan route, I was able, every time I took a step, there was about a six foot gap between where my foot was and going to land down. <laughs> Unless you timed it right, or else you were actually meeting it, your foot was the leg was all down. Yeah, meeting it on the way back up again. Yeah. Yeah, had that. Absolutely. Had that coming yes. from the Isle of Man. I, I the, think... last, the last time I was on the boat coming home from the Isle of Man, I spent about, a, it's a three hour crossing, and I spent about an hour and ten minutes of that in the toilet with my head down it. <laughs> it was that rough. <laughs> I think in the in the twelve months that I went from uh, from Hull to Zeebrugge, I probably had maybe two two really really bad uh, bad journeys, really bad ones, and and one of the worst you can guarantee. So <clears throat> to keep the price down, I used to go in a shared cabin, which meant that you shared it with three other blokes that you you don't know from Adam, yeah. and and the three other blokes that I was sharing with on the night was that was the worst night was three soldiers. Uh, on the way to Germany from the UK, oh, okay. so so you've you've got to be you know you can't be seen to be a, a wimp. No, uh, but it, it was one of those nights, and in the shared cabins, you're right at the front of the boat, 
so you can hear the waves crashing against the front of it and it's the it's the point where you know it goes up and down the most and you lay in your bunk and the boat goes up and the boat goes down and you're still up and you sort of drop down and, and hit the bunk as you oh. go down yeah no you'll find me with my head in the toilet thank you very much <laughs> i think, don't travel well <laughs> think Gibber, i get seasick as well i would prefer, prefer to fly but there's two major two two big reasons for getting the boat one is cheaper mm-hmm. and two you're not restricted on luggage. Your juice. Mm-hmm. Yep. No restrictions. See, my wife will fly. She won't. She won't go on a boat. She doesn't like boats. I think she went twice. She came over to Belgium with me and hated it. We had to go down to Calais to go across because it was shorter crossing. Uh, but she hates it. The thing for me is, is if you're on a boat and something happens, at least you can swim. If you're on an aeroplane, you're naked. Yeah. yeah. Stick your head between your legs in case you're asking. That's about. a bite. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But um, no, I. I really do. Honestly. My plane goes down. I'd be sat on top of the black box because that never gets destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> I, you'll find me hugging that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, Gail. <laughs> but it's um, you know, and the yes, fact sorry, we, we do. The fact that we don't have to worry about um, you know, coming with the as much just coming back as you want. You know, there's no absolutely no checks on our luggage at all. I had, on the way there. Maybe on the way back they might check, but you have no weight restriction either. We were flying, we had to, we booked it, we had booked in a, a suitcase to get the stuff back again. But what happens if that's full? We were, it was pretty jam packed. Then when we got to the airport security at Liverpool, because I had just Birmingham even or Birmingham, just because I had, I had this just bought, and it was like it was in the in my bag, and they brought it out, and they're like. What's this? Oh, what's that? Oh. I hadn't. Yes, I looked after all my juice, but I hadn't. I forgot about my wash bag, and I actually had juice in my wash bag as well. And it wasn't <laughs> plastic bags, but the airport security that day was fantastic. They allowed. Yeah, they were brilliant and absolutely amazing. I I was quite surprised. I mean, I, I get one holiday a year where I go off abroad. We go to Lanzarote, and I was quite surprised. Last year was the first year that, that I'd gone with vape stuff. And I was quite surprised how good they were uh, at Manchester Airport. Lanzarote, they didn't check anything. But Manchester Airport, they, I, have, I have like a vape rucksack, so it's got all the compartments for batteries and juice and uh, atties and vape, stuff like that. Vape rucksack? A vape rucksack, yeah. Um, and I went through that, and he, it, it got stopped. It got pulled to one side as it went through the conveyor belt. But the guy took it out. He knew exactly what it was, knew what it was for. There was no offer of, I'm going to take it off you, or what is it? Or it was just really, you know, straight up, everything was It was very easy. I was quite I was quite pleasantly surprised. Yeah, whenever we were coming out of Birmingham in October, we had to put, you know, all our vape air into the, the little plastic bag that's only about that big. Yeah. You know, so when you're coming through that with a couple of mods and you know two boxes of batteries and a couple of bottles of juice, it, it's a bit of a tight squeeze. But That's you it. know, Vic, be it rucksack latest. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Victor. How are you, sweetheart? Good evening, Vic. Good evening, Vic. It's it's a really good thing if if anybody goes on holiday because it's the right size for hand luggage. Um, oh, Andy, that's cruel. Funny, but cruel. <laughs> <laughs> it's it honestly, it's it's the best. I think it's one of the best bits of vape, apart from coil, of course. It's one of the best bits of vape gear I've ever bought. It's for going on holiday. It's brilliant. It's just got all your little things for your batteries and everything. Brilliant. Really, really good. Yes, Vic. Pee bags are cool. Pee bag. Yeah. What's a pee bag? It's a little bag that clips onto your belt, and there's room for uh, your mod, a bottle of juice, and spare batteries. It's oh, yeah. a little tiny pouch. Coil yeah. Master brought them out a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah. I thought a pee bag was the one you clipped onto the side of you, and you. Uh, no, that's uh, that's, a, that's for some different thing altogether. Yeah. yeah, it's a poor choice of name, but you know, pee bags are brilliant. They're handy little devices. I've got two of them. I've never actually used them, but I do have two of them. I, I used to use them, um, and then I found that some of the mods didn't fit in. I think I'm sure I'm sure I've got two lurking around somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've I've didn't, got two. I, I didn't know it was called a pee bag. Yeah, so yeah, since it's a rather poor choice of name, but yeah. it, you know, is that the next line of things? The coily, the coily what's that? Yeah, well, that's a good thing. Ooh. I've never thought I was. I've been watching um, 
uh, Nick Bissett on his Daily Vote TV, and he's coming out with all these um, oh, ne hats neck and yeah, all all sorts of stuff. Uh, maybe we should be should be looking at that some of it. But um, there was a guy at Expo last in October. There was selling all these different pouches and things they got. Oh, is that the fellow with the the big with the sling strap and the leather the, ones? Like for the radios. Yeah. The piece of got where they can clip the radios on. We had all these e pouches that you could clip your um your mods and your mods and everything and batteries and, and just like everything onto you. You could have them all at hand and it's like this is how easy it is. And he goes. Whoosh. Yeah, and some some of them the way they are, you don't even have to unclip them to be able to vape them and stuff. It's brilliant. You yeah, sorry, but I always have this thing. So I put, and this is, I bought I bought a lanyard to go on the um, on the series because it's got the little clip thing. Because um, I'm terrible for putting putting it in my jeans pocket, and as you're walking down the street, it's the weight of your mods actually pulling your jeans down as you're walking along. You see, so, there's this magical uh, invention called a belt. Yeah, I know, but. <laughs> <laughs> I t when I'm walking down the street, I just tend to have mine in my hand. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I just don't like putting my mod in my pocket. I like to have it in my hand. Yeah, it usually tips up as well. I have, I have like a, a sleeveless jacket as well, which has a, a nice top pocket in there, so I can put it in there. Now. Yeah, you can drop it in there. That's yeah. it. So you know, it's that's that's the best way to have your, your recording device. Yeah. I should maybe try one of my. Uh, <clears throat> no, no, I'm just getting get one of my lanyards off me, uh, off me coily to see if it'll fit on me. It will do, bet you it does. Yeah, yeah, fit, uh, yeah. There you go, there you go. Right, <laughs> Sorted. <clears throat> now you'll never drop it when you're right. I could have done with one of those on the on the Vega Pro. Yeah, Spectrum. that took a bounce, didn't it? Yeah. I had me with a broken wrist, and I wanted to put it into my pocket, and missed the pocket, and I just hit the floor. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so there's a nice chip on the button now. Uh, yeah. I did that. That. Would, that would just break my heart, that. I'd, I'd just got a brand new black, black therian, and I went to, it was actually, I went to see uh, Pet Shop Boys at Leeds. John, John, you take it easy, sweetheart, and good luck for tomorrow. Good luck for tomorrow, and say hi to Jude from us all. Yep. Hi, Jude. Bye, Jude. Mwah. Yay. No, I Andy, just informed me my plaque's done. Yay. Andy, no, you, I didn't miss the door. Just assume that you didn't miss the taxi. Oh, shots fired. <laughs> so I, I dropped a, a brand new black therian on the floor after uh, going back to the car after a Pet Shop Boys concert. And I was mortified. Absolutely mortified. Did it do you any damage? No, it didn't. It, it, it had a little scratch just sort of down one, one edge of it, and that was it. It had a Cleto 120 that didn't break. That was in. That didn't get scratched either. <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah, I'm usually pretty careful with my mods. Um, I think I had. Uh, do you remember the Kanger NE box? I the don't. side by sider. I had one of those and. Um, Somebody bumped into me. I was going to my local leisure centre, and somebody bumped into me and knocked it out of my hand, and it had it survived a twelve foot drop. Uh -huh. Not a mark on it. Is that what you call uh -huh. your house these days? Smart ass. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. It was one of the rare occasions I was going swimming, which I don't do really. Uh -huh. I don't do water. <laughs> you hear that's from the gloss. Sorry. Ryan says he's got sticky fingers from the gloss. You are. <coughs> yeah, you, uh, yeah. As her scene says, Ryan, you're not meant to gloss yourself. I'm <laughs> gloss. <laughs> but yeah, no, the any box survived a 12 foot drop. Not a mark on it. I just, I, I hate scratching things. I hate damaging things. I'm, I'm just I'm the so... same. I just, oh no, it, it just drives me insane. Big driver, oh. it's only because. That hit the ground, hit concrete, and that's the only re you know that was the only damage done to it. We've knocked that wee bit of paint off. The rest of the paint on it has stayed fine. There's no mm -hmm. other, no other damage to it. So it's not that bad. 
Is it actually paint they put on those, or is it Serica? It's like powder coat. Is it? Yeah. But the only mod I've ever had trouble with the paint with was the uh, Alien. Uh, exactly the same thing, the Alien. Yeah. After a couple of weeks, the well, in my case, it was about a, it was about a month or so. Yeah, he stripped it down. Yeah. Um, that was because that used to be black and gold. I can make it shine. Make it. I'm, I can certainly make it really shiny. Yeah, but um, I wasn't using it, and <laughs> I wasn't using it. I had bought one of the uh, the wraps, one of the custom wraps uh, from uh, was it Zap, Zap wraps? I bought it from. Right. And I'd uh, put the wrap on it, and I just wasn't using it, and I gave it to Roy. Oh, look at paint's coming off that. <laughs> That's not bad going. You've had that nearly a year. A year in July. Yeah, because I have one as well, and my paint's still perfect. Generate, yeah, there was a little bit of wear just on the battery door on mine, just at the edges. But other than that, you know, the paint job on this is holding up really well. So. But we've had our bags sorted. Huh. Yeah, it had to be a thick bit gale to put onto it because it's actually chipped out of the bottom. Simon, that's why I don't like painted mods. Most of them wear, and if you have a drink, it really, if you have a drink, it really shows up. That's why I prefer to have a steady wood. See, there's, there's, I've, um, uh, what called, there's a, a resin mod, a single battery resin mod, I think, that there was two versions of it, as modus and, as modus? I'll find it in a minute, but that's that has like a it, it looks like a metal stainless steel front to it. So it's got the 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 sort of plate at the front where the display is and the buttons are. It looks like it's metal, and it's the one that I use in the house. So it's my metal lung um, mod that I use or used to use in the house. But all the paint. Sorry, sorry that's right. For happy happy four year anniversary, Vic. Happy four anniversary, Vic. Yes, happy yeah, anniversary. Four years ago today, vaping with Vic was born. <laughs> See, he's not as old as everybody says. <coughs> Why don't you jump on, Vic, and say... Yeah, you're more than welcome to call in. The Stride, that's it. Yeah, the Asmoda Stride. And the, They're the a lovely little mod. But it's, and it's a lovely little mod, but the silver, where it, well, I thought it was, it was steel, stainless steel, rubbed off, and it's like a yellowy something underneath it. It's, it's sort of all rubbed off the front of it. Oh, and right, it just like looks it's nappy. like plated. Must be plated, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, Deadly Sinner got one of the, he had one of the striders, I think his was the purple, but um, his had the gold front. Yeah. So. Because there was two versions, wasn't there? There was Modus and then it, it was badged. Uh, under CKS. Another That's it, CKS, mm -hmm. yeah. So. And then the only, somebody was saying about um, resin mods that I, I had a problem with um, the. Spruza. The right. the doors that came with the you know the the stabwood doors that came on the Spruza warped, and, and I couldn't work it out. I'd I'd had it for like four days. It was absolutely fine. All of a sudden, I was putting my hands on it. it was the plates were moving. That's so not I, good. No, so I contacted where I got it from, and they said, "Oh, send it back." I sent it back to them. They got it back, and they said, "That absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it." I said, but they're moving, and I've done a video, and I've, I've sent you the video, and shown it moving. It's, it's physically, you can see the things moving up and down. So they sent it back again, and it was all right for a day, and then it started to go again. So I got in contact with Asmodus and said, why is this doing this? I don't, I just don't understand it. Um, and they said, oh, it's the stab wood. It, it, in certain temperatures, it, it starts to warp. So it's as if they say, if you soak it in water, and then put it on a flat surface under something heavy, mm. it flattens it out. Um, so I tried that. That didn't work. I mean, they, I, honestly, as modus, I couldn't fault at all. They sent a, a replacement or two two pairs of uh, resin doors out free of charge. Oh, was, they were really, nice. really good. Yeah, I've um, the Manikin Boost and the uh, the V2, and not an issue with any of the two of them. They're absolutely fantastic little mods. Yeah. And then I went and I bought the Balloona a couple of weeks ago. I love that tank. Yeah. I've got the oh, I've got the Lustro um, and the Minikin VTs. I've got. What do you think of the Lustro? I like it. It's the display is just a bit small. Me being old 
and, and needing glasses, which I'm not wearing at the moment. Um, <coughs> sorry? Are you being vain, not wearing them? I'm being vain. I, I look Naughty like... Naughty boy. Uh, I don't know what... You need to wear them, you need to wear them. Don't be ashamed that of it. Sounds, that sounds like my wife. Whenever we get in the car, are you going to put your glasses on? Yeah. If you need to yeah. wear them, you need to wear them. Don't be ashamed of it. Is there no problem with those? <clears throat> I'm, I'm just... So, uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, I, I need my glasses on to, um, to see what I'm, what I'm building, particularly. Mm. <laughs> Why do when I come in chat, you and Gary always say hello at the same time? It was a perfect timing or what? It's that whole telepathy thing. And Gary fixed his Kodama himself after Asmodus allegedly fixed it. Yeah, Gary bought the uh, Minikin V2 Kodama at Expo last year. Paid right. rather a lot of money for it. No. And it went tits up and he sent it back to his modus to get it fixed and he done a better job of it himself by the sound of things. Uh, <laughs> well Sam and I, I honestly couldn't fault them at all for the support they were really, really I mean usually China if, if you get in touch with them it's that you, you either don't get an answer or it takes forever to get an answer from them yeah. but his modus were just so on the ball there was, there was no messing about it was just sorted there and then mm -hmm. Andy Summerfield, yeah, I, 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 I've got two of them, and it's just because I use that one, I literally, when I'm in the house and I'm sat watching TV, I've got the mod in my hand, and I've probably got a habit of sat sat doing that on the paint while I'm sat watching TV, and I think that's probably what's rubbed the silver off it. Quite possibly. Ooh, the bad yeah. habits of Simon. Yeah. Stroking the mod. <laughs> that's victory. Comfort. Today. Yeah. So has anybody in chat got any questions for either Simon Vapor Bunny or even myself? You don't have any for me. Yep. Any questions, feel free to ask. So this why we're waiting there. Have you got any any plans to expand the Coily Empire? I know we were just joking about the, the Coily bag and everything else and mm -hmm. Any no plans to expand the merchandise? No, I think the thing is I just I just want to concentrate on, on Coily and just just keep focused on that. There's nothing, nothing. I, I, I obviously want to get these injection molded units in, and we can get those out, make it more available, um, and then see what. I think the thing for me is, like I said, the, the website for me is a uh, is. I'm, I'm working at the moment to improve the Leglands page, doing searches and being able to put ratings on. Um, and I'm going to try and get that done this weekend. Um, obviously, an app, Roy. Um, that's that's yeah, the next. Thing. Now that you mention it, that might actually make yeah. a good idea. <clears throat> an Android app. What, yeah. What's that? An Android app. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's the next thing. But there's there's, that yet. Uh, <laughs> there's no uh, there's no no plans to do to do anything else. There's there's things that I keep thinking about. So there's things I think keep thinking about doing that I might want to do. But I so I just want to make sure that it's it's right first. And I, I like I like hashtag coil, yeah. I like the um I, I like the, the sort of close contact that I have with everybody that's that's on the group and on the page and messaging and everything else. It's it's that's that's the one thing I would I would give you a massive applause for. Yeah. Is that the personal touch that you put to absolutely everything you do, from whether it's the packaging to how you respond to every message that's put into the 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 group. Mm. You're there. No matter no matter how busy everything else is, you respond very quickly to any questions that anybody's got, to any comments that people make. You laugh and joke along with the ones who are having a bit of a joke. You know, mm. Put the X one and then a lot of more <laughs> to wind you up and and you know running out looking for people because they put X one the wrong. Yeah. <laughs> The thing is, it's just I, I sort of know it's 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 frustrating when you you want to talk to somebody and you don't feel like you've got contact with somebody and you feel distant from from you know from where you bought a product from. So I, I just want to make sure I keep that. Too many that people, person. too many people nowadays, but are just after your money and they don't yeah. provide the personal the personal element to it. No. So you know that's why a lot of people do feel sort of distanced from various different companies you know 
there's so many times you hear of it happening, somebody spends a bit of money on something, mm. something goes wrong with it, and the customer service then's crap. That's it. The customer service is perfect until they get that money. Yeah. And then the minute they've got your money, it's like they don't want to know. You're just another number to them. Somebody, yeah. did, for me, it's somebody, somebody said to me the other day, uh, in fact, yesterday, they said, oh, there's, there's two types of, well, there's three types of people in customer service. There's really bad customer service. There's people that are really good at customer service but don't have that rapport. So you know they've just been trained in customer service and it's a very scripted. Yeah, so they're reading off a script. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the personal touch. There's the people who are warm and who respond and who you feel like you're having a conversation with, and they're the they're the ones that people like to to, to sort of talk to and, and deal with. And that's, that's what I like to make. Which you are 100. percent Yeah, I try. I mean, it's like the, the I was saying earlier about the guy that um, I sent his coily off to, to Canada, and it's it's now in on, on holiday in Portugal. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I I said I'll get one out to him a replacement out but I thought he's, he's obviously waited nearly two weeks now and the thing's still in Portugal um, so I've I've just put it on a courier uh, it's it's expensive but I just I just want him to have his, his Kylie is desperate to get it so it's on a on a four day four day courier to Canada now so it's just you know it's about looking after people well that's that's what it's all about is you know because without your customers you wouldn't have Exactly. You know, you wouldn't have the need to produce your item, so you yeah. want to look after the customers you've got because then they're going to tell their friends, yeah. and so on and so on and so on. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's the same with any business. It relies on repeat custom. Mm -hmm. And so, people talk. You know, people. They always say that the people tell pe other people of a bad experience. Yeah. But they rarely yeah, tell people. Yeah, and we all know we all know mud sticks and bad news travels mm. a hell of a lot faster than good news. Absolutely. Yeah. Come on, heck, Andy. Andy, the vape mail opened and the next shots were taken, but not the juice. So the company replacing the entire order with extra next shots for the juice I do have. Wow. That's good customer service. Yeah, that's exceptionally good customer service. Andy, right. you should do reviews and give them the best five star review ever. <laughs> the fact is, you'll go back to them now, wouldn't you? You would go back and deal with them. So, if you want to buy juice, you've got confidence that next time you go back, if something goes wrong, it'll get sorted out. And it'll get yeah. sorted out quickly as well. Yeah. Well, Nick, I'll, I'll be totally honest, Simon. When I got one call, it'll be like, as a customer service, had it been good? I'd be like, yeah, I've got a good review or whatever and everything else. But the fact that you're such a personable person. And your the customer service side has been absolutely awesome. That's what sort of keeps kept yeah. my interest and has kept me going. Right, I want one of every color. Yeah. I want to get a, I want to take one of every color and get it into your frame. With yeah. the, the metal one as a centerpiece. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one's right it and then get it up on the wall. It's mm -hmm. just because it is such a it's a fantastic tool, and I will always things British made things or Northern Irish made things or Irish made things is. Who I think we need to support, and we also need to support bricks and mortar shops as well. Absolutely, it's it's all fine and dandy, you know, ordering just off offline or online to maybe get it, you know, a couple of quid cheaper. Mm. But you know, if you look at a lot of the shops, a lot of the shops have great deals. Even out in America, where Sonic went into a shop and found it just he absolutely loves, and he got it for a fiver. Yeah, five dollars. But you see that that's it, it's not just that, is it? I mean, I I love, I've, I've got my local shop here, and there's two or three local shops that are, you know, maybe fifteen twenty miles away that I like to go to. A because the, it's, the, it's the social thing. B I can um, uh, try like juices. I can try juices if I want to look at the mod. I can have a look at the mod and I can get it in my hand and see if I like it, see if it feels right. But the fact is that the price. All right. Nine times out of ten, even if they haven't got a deal on, you're going to be paying a bit more than you'll pay online. But you know, and I know some places do free postage. But the fact is, if if I buy that, I'm going to pay maybe an extra five, ten pound more than I pay online. But if it goes wrong, I can walk back into the shop and say, "There, I bought that from you last week. It's gone wrong. You know, can you sort it out? Can you look at it?" So it's just, I'm, I'm just a real big believer. And and don't get me wrong, I buy I buy a lot of stuff online, but I love going into my local vape shops. Absolutely love it. That's yeah, I loved it so much. I went and got a job in one. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, and it's also the customer service within the shops as well. Yeah. You know, if you get, if you get good, personable people in a shop that makes you want to be in the shop and you know, even spend time in the shop. And whether you're buying something or not, you're you're in there for the for the vape 
chat, the sort of the mm -hmm. family type set of things. And by talking to other people, you get to know what certain things are like, what certain mods are like, or what certain tanks are like. Yeah. Else. Um, I've only came across vaporized shops here, and they aren't too good in my experience, plus they are tired of overpriced from the lighting. But that's the thing. Well, some of them, some of those big chains like that are. And will you lot please stop trying to give away my hex? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants this mod. It is. It's flash. It's you ain't getting it. <laughs> <coughs> but second, Balamina here, we're like, we're not a, that big a town. Um, the whole district of Balamina. What was the old Balamina borough? There's only got twenty-five thousand people in it. Yeah. We've now got one, two, three, four, five, six, six shops. Mm -hmm. Um, but three of them you wouldn't. Yeah, you, you wouldn't get near. Unless you're a mouth to longer, you wouldn't get near. Well, one you wouldn't get near. Some of them you wouldn't. Well, unless you're a mouth to longer, you wouldn't go into. So it's taken a good shop to actually open up in the town now, and um, it's hopefully going to take off. And I think that's the. I mean, the, all the shops around me, all bar two or three, are, are sort of independents. They're all, you know, sort of run by the people who are passionate about their their products and and everything else. Um, and it, you know, it's it's the one uh, the one shop that you go into when you go, you get a handshake and everything else. There's not many shops, you know, you don't go into Morrison's and shake the hand with a checkout assistant. But you, you, no. you know, it's you always get a real good welcome when you go in there. I, I, I absolutely love it. I really do enjoy it. Well, the, uh, the one I'm going to be working in is uh, get a very laid-back approach. Um, there's nice, big, comfy couches for you to sit. You can have a cup of coffee. Uh, there's a pool table, a dartboard. There's yeah. ping pong. Table you know, tennis. Yeah. You can, you can just go in and chill out. And yeah. it's just a, a real nice, relaxed kind of atmosphere. And, you know, telly on, you get music going. Yeah, there's an Xbox as well for... Yeah. Uh, the vapors that like to play some games too. So, so, and we're going to we are going to be hosting Balamina's very first uh, late night vape night. I love vape nights. I, I absolutely. Love, I'm always too. I'm uh, because I'm like I said earlier on. I'm a bit introvert. I'm always a bit shy of doing the because uh, the, they always have a cloud comp, and I'm always terrified of doing that. So I never do the cloud comps. But I just I love the vape nights. Oh, here's the good nice. crack. <coughs> yeah, a good laugh. I uh, I under. Bottles. Yeah, yeah, we do one with the, uh, you know the things with the like with the e for your kids. You blow the bubbles with them. Oh yeah, yeah. We yeah. did the cloud competition at one of the vape meets last year. And it was for who could blow the biggest vape bubble, yeah. which which was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I epically failed at that one, um, but then one of the other mates, I did a vape, uh, did the cloud comp and. There was people there that had these big fancy mech mod kits with these super low ohm builds and stuff in them. I rocked up with a Minikin V2 and a goon on it, <laughs> and I chucked the biggest cloud. So I yeah. won that one. It was like yes. <laughs> Couple of the other weekend there, we were at one, and I did the yep. <laughs> I did one, and I didn't win it. I was nowhere near winning it. But there was a, a fellow there. We've got like a bit of a rivalry going, and. Yeah, I managed to beat him, and I was happy because I beat him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I beat John. That was all I cared about. You know. I didn't win it. Who uh, it was? It was uh, Stevie that won that one that night, wasn't it, babe? It was. Oh. All right, Hussein, take care, buddy. I'll speak yes. to you soon. Good night. Roy, say good night to Hussein. Good night, Hussein. That was the that was the winning cloud. Yeah, that's Stevie. Good. That's who I'm going to be working with. In this <laughs> Thank you. Look how look how look how vapey the place is. Yeah, it was well fogged out, wasn't it? That was my pitiful effort. <laughs> yeah, I think I I even beat you. Yep, that's the that's the that's the fella I beat. That's John. Yep, you see that was pretty <laughs> 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 I had him as ass. Yeah. <laughs> Dale just said I must try and get to it, but I must, I must, I'll see if I can sort something in. Yeah. Perhaps I should get Gail to speak to my wife, <laughs> or you to speak to my wife, buddy. Just bring her with you. Just 
pack her in the car, don't tell um, her where you're going, and just yeah. walk up to Expo. <laughs> I, I reckon she would. I reckon she would enjoy it. I think she would as well, because you know, even if she doesn't vet, you know, just the atmosphere. Because there are quite a few people that go to the Expo that don't Ooh. actually vet, but they just mm. go for the crack. Aiden, so. Aiden, Aiden and Mark's wife go. Yeah, they don't vet. They just go for the shits and giggles. They come in. They they come in for the for the food. Yeah. No, I really need to really need to try. <clears throat> yeah, no, it's brilliant. I'm just I'm like a kid at Christmas whenever it comes to Expo season. I just get all excited. <clears throat> I get more excited actually about Expo than I do Christmas. <laughs> yes, I can testify. Andy Summerfield, what does my wife think of me vaping? So, I smoked for thirty three years, and we've been married for as I said twenty seven together for thirty odd years now. Um, and she's always asked me. She's never. She's never got at me. She's always said to me she wanted to, me to stop smoking. Um, and I, well, she she said to me two years ago. She said, if you stop smoking, I'll let you have a dog. Which I always always wanted a dog. Um, <clears throat> and she Black thought, meal. that yeah, works. <laughs> she thought, but yes, but the point was she thought I wouldn't do it, and I did. Um, so we got a dog. Uh, I stopped smoking. Started vaping. And she has no. It's for me and for her. It's the smell. So I don't smell of cigarettes anymore. The house, you know, the back of the house doesn't smell of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't. I don't use my sub M tanks in the house because she doesn't like lots of vapor in the house. So I use my mouth to lung tanks. Um, but other than that, she she's over the moon that I'm vaping and not smoking. That's that's very positive. Oh. Yes, that's that's the thing that gets me as well is the the smell. I get I, I'm excessively paranoid at the best of times, but I'm mm. even worse now since I quit smoking yeah. because I can smell it a mile off from other people. Mm. It doesn't annoy me if I'm stood beside somebody and they're smoking. That doesn't annoy me. It's that yeah. stale smell that follows them afterwards. Yeah, exactly. And then I get paranoid. I, I think to myself. God, I used to smell like that, and that's me and yeah. my perfume. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's the thing I think. Now, I mean, I, I, I went up to um, the, so my day job, uh, my client's based over in Bury in Lancashire. I went over there last week, um, and there's a few people that smoke there, and, and you can smell it. And I, I, I mm. thought, I, I can't believe that I spent so many years smelling like that. And don't get me yeah. wrong, I, I'm not anti-smoking at all. I have nothing against anybody that smokes. Um, well, sorry, I'm not. I'm going to say I'm not anti smoking. I'm, I, obviously, I, I don't like smoking now, but I, I wouldn't say to anybody, you can't smoke around me, you can't do this. Um, but the, I said the just. The stipulation just, I have with that is, you know, anybody is welcome in my home. They mm -hmm. can vape all they like, but if they smoke, out. Yeah. Nobody, nobody I mean, I, I, I've never smoked in our house, never smoked in the house. Um, and anybody that come, my, both my parents smoke, they don't smoke in the house. So, well, anybody smoking my car now, that's, mm -hmm. that's it. Um, again, it's, it's it's the stale smell. There's yeah. Sloan, my Sloan's husband smokes big cigars, he most big clouds, and we just agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate I hate the smell of cigars. Even when I was a smoker, I hated the smell of cigars. I flat out yeah. refused to allow them in my home. I, d I don't like cigars. Cigar smoke is harder to get out than cigarette smoke is, mm. and that smell just it stays for. For weeks, and I I cannot stand the smell of cigars. The only thing Andy Summerfield doesn't like about the smell of vaping is custard, vile yellow. Yes, hashtag custards for Andy. <laughs> I th the one thing I do like is the smell of pipe tobacco. I like to smell something because the pipe tobacco has like a, a sort of an aromatic smell. I, I, I quite like. I it. like the smell of it in the pipe. I don't like the smell of it when it's burning. No, you see, I quite like. But the I like the smell of it in the pipe. Yeah, and my dad used to have a tobacconist when we were kids. Uh, it's a tobacconist shop, so he had, and this was back in the old days. He had all the proper tobaccos, like the the big jar of twisted tobacco and flake and leaf and oh, mm -hmm. oh, and the smell of that tobacconist was just. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I just know the smell of stale cigarettes now. Like you, you get it all the time when you're stood in Tesco's and you know you're standing at the checkout and somebody behind you or the person in front of you just completely reeks of it. And it's, yeah, oh, it's god awful. The guy, the guy beside me in work smokes, and the smell of stale smoke of him when he comes in. Mm. Yeah, 
horrible. People, people used to, when I was a smoker, people used to say, oh, um, I, uh, when I would go to the pub, I had to come back in and wash my clothes. And I thought, what are you talking about? It's just stupid. It doesn't smell that bad. But now, when you stop smoking, you realise what it did smell like, you know, in your clothes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The smell of somebody smoking, or actually the fresh smoke, that doesn't bother me. I actually quite mm. like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's the steel, it's always been steel smoke. And like it's so so much nicer now. I come down into my living room, I smoke in the smoke in the house. I come down into the living room and it smells. It actually still smells of iron brew. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff's staying around. I finished the bottle ages ago and it still yeah, the smell of it still hanging there. Well, my house at the minute is a mixture of bubble gum and um, pixie dust. Because Rebecca, uh, I gave Rebecca the last of my pixie dust because she ran out of her tickle pink. So I gave her the last of the pixie dust. So that's what my house smells like at the minute. It's bubble gum and pixie dust. That room gets very, very, very foggy whenever there's... Um, Three of us. <laughs> and I don't do much long anymore at all. It's How do I do it? It's either big clouds or no clouds. <laughs> oh, well, I've my wee set up there with the CBD in it. And... Um, I have a little DNA 60 mod, but it just chews through batteries like you wouldn't believe. So yeah. I bought myself a Nautilus 2 to go on top of it. So I have a nice, you know, nice wee mouth along set up going up. there. But I haven't, I haven't cracked this bad boy out yet. But yeah, I think uh, Crystal will be going into this. It's a nice little I think, I think that, I think that absinthe one would probably taste better in a mouth to lung setup than it would. It's goodness. You know. See so, you know, those the little mouth to lung setups I could never so, so the Nautilus two and the had uh, the original Nautilus and there was actually the other one as well, the was it the iJoy Elf was tying up the mouth to lung tank as well. Yeah. But I could never get away with the sort of um heavier VG juices <laughs> in those. <laughs> always always had to use the fifty fifty liquid. Jeez, Sloan Ranger turned round turned down a job at Vaporize as a staffer on commission. That's all about the seals and not about the vice with them. Mm. Yeah, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Because it, that's that's the kind of dickheads that the vape industry could really do without. Because they're just they are purely sales driven. They're not they haven't a clue about what they're selling. They'll just hire anybody as long as they can meet a target. And as far as I'm concerned in the vape industry, if you're selling a product, you need to know that product. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can't bring in a bunch of amateurs to sell stuff that they have no clue about or no interest in, for that matter. Well, there's so, so, many, there's so many scare stories about vape shops selling people mechs and things like that, isn't it, for the first time vape? But, you know, somebody comes in, I want a mech, you just think, why, why would you do that? Well, no. I was in a shop in Palomina um, after I started doing my reviews, written reviews, and pretended I wasn't I didn't be it. And looking at a Mac, and they were going to sell me it. Mm -hmm. just, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. But there is one shop in Balamina at the minute, it's, um, it's a total newbie shop. Um, I, shouldn't, I should get out of the way of saying newbie, it's a total mouth to lung uh, shop, but it's got sort of like the starter kits and everything else. And it's 99% of it's heading it's, 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 it's starters, and the guy that works in there doesn't do it at all. But he, he does go out of his way with customer service, and he does go out of his way to actually learn about the product he's selling. Mm. Yeah, well, he does his research, you know, so he, you know, he has a, at least half a clue what he's doing, even though he doesn't use the product himself. But, you know, he has done enough homework <clears throat> to know how to set them up properly, and you know how to give the right advice. Yeah. But not all, not all people are like that. A lot of people just can't be bothered because to them it's just another job. Yeah. You know, I want to do this because I enjoy vaping. I enjoy learning about the new products. I enjoy testing all the new flavors and stuff like that. And, you know, there was very little help available for me when I first started vaping. I'd like to think that I know enough that I'd be able to steer somebody in the right direction to get the setup that's right for them. Absolutely. You know, that's that's why I do it, because I want to help people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I was pretty fortunate because our local vape shop are, are really, really good. Uh, when I first started vaping, I went up there and I got a little, um, I can't even remember what it was, but a little, you know, the sort of voltage, the adjustable voltage battery and a little clearer for the top of it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and I, 
Yeah, and that's I, what I started on. Yeah, and and I stuck with that for a few months, and I went back in. I, I was desperate to try Subam because I'd, I'd just seen that the my son vape, C vape before I did. Um, and and I mean, even when I went in for that, they were advising and saying, "Are you sure you really want to do that? You know, you've only been vaping on a on a, a like a, a basic EC for for two or three months. You sure you want to move to Subam?" So there was there was loads of advice and and they were really good and and helping me. And it, you know it's the best thing I ever did was moving to Subab. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they were really really good. And I, I listen to them now when people come in and say that they want something and they're always, you know, are you sure that's what you want? You know, if you if you've not used a mech, we're not they, they will refuse to sell somebody an advanced kit that hasn't any experience or hasn't enough experience in vaping. And for me, yeah. that's that's commendable. It really is. We've got a five minute warning because. Unlike the days of old, where it wouldn't have really mattered, we actually do. There's a show after us um, this evening. Um, yes, uh, stay tuned. Uh, Mr. Chunkmeister himself will be on after us uh, at 10 p.m. for is it chilling with Chunk? I think he calls it, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes, there we go. Zan's just put the the message in for that one. So. Um, <laughs> yes, stay stay tuned for Mr. Chunkmeister. Just to give the channel a breathing space to, to wrap up this show and everything else before another show comes comes in. So that's why it always just finishes five minutes early. We've got a show following. Yeah, because even though we go off air, YouTube's maybe <coughs> still recording for a couple of minutes after we go off. So that it's so that we can split the shows rather than having to upload it in one massive big file. So. <laughs> Gary, where have you been? Do you not check the schedule, man? I'm at yours. I've just realised as well. There's another hobby that I haven't told you about. Well, I'll save that for another time. It's a secretive one, one that I don't tell many people about. So that's grand. We can keep that for the next. I'll keep that for mm, keep that, keep that for next time. Because yeah. um, next week it's Bonnie. <sighs> yeah. We'll pick one. We're just trying to choose, and you know, um, ones that we can get ones from chat as well. Send what they do. And, Everything else, trying to make it you know, as much as interactive as possible, and everything else. Mm. So, so chunks. Um, episode three is the new neighbor. That's what this topic is tonight. Mm. You're, you're lucky. I remember this show was on, Bonnie. <laughs> Gary, Rainbow. It's not good enough. <coughs> no, not good enough. I'm at your. Mm -hmm. I'm so, at your. You know, so always just make sure it's on the schedule, just to make sure you do check out the schedule, folks, because there is shows on, on Monday nights, Tuesday nights, Wednesday nights, and like, Friday nights. Solo, Vic and Solom on a Thursday, so Solom is on channel then. Yeah, but that's not the schedule for this network. Yeah. They're from this network. Yes, right. but they do things on their own channels as well. Yeah. So make sure you check all those out. And, uh, and then, <laughs> when did this happen? <laughs> Sorry, has got his own yeah. his own nightbot command. That is epic. <laughs> rainbow, kiss the rainbow. Love it! <laughs> I love it. That is brilliant. <laughs> it is. So we'll start our winding up then. Uh, we'll do a little climbing. First of all. Yes, thank you very much indeed. It's been really, really, really good to be on again. Uh, I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. And again, apologies because I've, I've still struggled to keep up with the chat. I will get used to it. Um, I will learn to multitask. But uh, it's been a, a pleasure to, to join you and Bunny again, Roy. Uh, really welcome. enjoyed it. So, uh, yes, thank you very much indeed. Bunny? Yeah, basically what Simon said. Thank you, Roy, for bringing me on again, even though it's not technically my show, but, you know. Um, Thank you to Zan, our ever so gracious and charming host, as ever. Yep. Yay, the boss. Uh, yeah, thank you to you lot in chat for keeping us all entertained. And Simon, again, thank you for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And I'll just echo what Bonnie said. Thank you, thank you, Simon, for coming on. Thank you, Zan, for hosting. Thank you, Bonnie, for joining me. And thank You're you welcome. to all the wonderful people in chat. And uh, say stay tuned for Chunk, and I will see you soon.